Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, I will share with you 10 tips to make you more efficient in Luminar Neo. Editing in Luminar Neo is very intuitive. However, there are some tools and features that are hidden and they will make your editing faster and easier. In a tip number one, I want to talk to you about the human aware features in a Structure AI and Atmosphere AI tools. Both of them, when you apply them to the image, avoid adding the effect to the human. Now let's start with the Atmosphere AI. We're going to jump into our main toolbar, Creative section and Atmosphere AI tools. We can leave the setting on fog and let's just increase the effect by pushing the amount slider up. I'm going to overdo it so you can see the difference and you can see how we are adding the fog to the background of the image. However, it doesn't apply to the model or to the lady. When I bring it down a little bit, you can still see how it works. This works for all the types of atmosphere AI features. So I can click on a drop down box and turn it, for example, into the layered fog. Then I can increase the amount, adjust the depth, so the fog will come from the bottom and it will still not be applied to the body. When it comes to Structure AI, it works exactly the same. This is a great example of an image where we would benefit with a little bit of structure on the texture around the person. So for this, we're going to go into the Essentials tools, open the Structure AI, and we're going to push the amount to add some structure and details. You can see how we applying the effect, and when I really push it, how we add the details and structure everywhere. However, once again, as you can see, it doesn't apply to the human. Let's have a look before and after, and you can see how well the human ever function work. Now, specifically with the structure AI, this is something that is important to remember, as sometimes you wanna add some clarity, details, and texture to the people as well. If you wanna do that, you need to use another tool like details or sharpening or dramatic tool in the creative section. In tip number two, I want to show you how we can quickly switch our brush between paint and erase. We have another sample file here, and let's say that we just want to add a little bit of brightness to the card. So we're going to go into the Essential Tools, Develop Tool, increase the exposure, and then into the Masking tab. In the Masking tab, we're going to go into the brush and click on Paint. Now we can start to paint over the car and by doing that, we will just bring the brightness to the car. Let's have a look before and after. Now, as I did it really quickly, you can see that I went over some of the other areas of the image. In past, I would have to go into the develop tool again, click on erase, maybe zoom in and remove the areas that I didn't want to paint over. But now you can actually just use X on your keyboard to switch between the two brushes and do it much faster. This way you don't have to go back and forward to the develop tool or any tool where you're using the masking and just keep using the X on your keyboard to switch between paint and erase. With the tip number three, we are still going to focus on brushing. But this time I want to show you how you can move around the screen while brushing. Normally, when you zoom in, you can just use your mouse to move around. 
but it doesn't work like this when you have a brush selected. Let me show you what I mean. When I go again into Develop Tool, increase the exposure, go into the Masking tab, use the brush, and now I would want to paint the area into the car. So let's say I paint over this part very quickly, and now I need to move here. But now I can't drag because as I am clicking with my mouse, I am actually continuing painting. So to move around, all you need to do is to hit the spacebar on your keyboard, your mouse will turn back to the hand, and now you can move around. So again, you can continue selecting the areas and masking the areas you want. So it's a simple spacebar on your keyboard, you just hit it and move around. When you're ready to paint, just release it and continue. With the tip number four, I want to show you the before and after options in Luminar Neo. Now I have an image here. I have already applied many adjustments to it. Let's have a look. When we click on the edit tab, lots of lots of different tools used and applied. And when I go back into the tools, I can now click on the eye icon on the bottom of our screen to see the before and after. Or I can also use the keyboard to see the before and after like this. However, what if I just want to see before and after for one individual tool? Let me show you an example. Let's go into our essential tools, color, HSL panel, and saturation. And what we want to do, we just want to bring the saturation of the warm colors down. So we're going to bring the red, orange, and yellow down, just to make it a little bit more natural. Now, if I would use keyboard at this point, it would show me the before and after for all the edits I have already applied. But I don't want to do that. I just want to see the before and after for this specific tool. Well, for this, all you need to do is to click on the eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. And it's here where you can see the before and after for that specific effect and for that specific tool. So again, before and after for the actual tool and before and after for the entire image and all the tools you have already applied to it. With this next tip, I want to talk to you about using the Relight AI tool for a portrait photography. Many photographers consider the Relight AI as a tool for landscape photography, and it works very well for that. However, it can be used for portraits as well, and it works great for it. So we have the example here. We're going to go into our creative section, open the Relight AI, and we start by increasing the brightness near and bringing the brightness far all the way down. Now Luminar Neo will scan the image and apply the initial mask. Now we can adjust the depth. So we can basically select what is Luminar Neo considering as near and far. So we can adjust it. Let's say that we want only work with the background and then our main subject. And now we can go in and adjust the brightness near and brightness far. So we don't want the subject to be that bright. We just want it a little brighter, maybe around 10. And now with the brightness far, we don't want it that dark, but we want it just a little bit darker, just to bring more attention towards the main subject. Now let's have a look at the before and after. And I think the main subject is still a little bit too bright. So maybe bring it down a little bit more. Again, before and after. So this already looks much nicer. And it's a great example on how you can use Relight AI for portrait photography and how to quickly adjust the background brightness and the brightness of your main subject. The use of histogram is an important part of photo editing. In Luminar Neo and the edit module, there are two ways of how you can see it. The first one is to right click on your image and select show histogram. And the histogram will appear on your main toolbar on the top. There you can click on it and adjust what exactly you want to see. The second option on how you can see histogram is to go into the develop tool, then into the curves, and you will see that the histogram show under the curves here. With the tip number seven, I want to show you how you can show live clipping mask on your image. The clipping mask will help you to see the areas where you overexposed and also the areas where you completely 
dark. Let me show you. This is a great example of this high key portrait. And to see the clipping masks, you have a two option on how you can do that. You can hit J on your keyboard, or you can also go into your histogram and click on these little dots in each of the corner of the histogram. Once you do that, we can now adjust the image. So let's say we're gonna go into our curves. We are still in a develop tool and we can now drag the white point. And when we go really far, you will see how we start to get this red overlay. With the red overlay, you can right away see the areas where it's overexposed, it's pure white. And if you would want to print this image, it would be just white. There would be no details left there. So now we can easily adjust it until the red disappear completely. And now we know that even in the brighter areas, we have details. Similarly, for the shadows or black points, when I drag them around, when I overdo it, you will see how we start to get the blue overlay. So again, those are the areas that are 100% black and you wanna avoid that as much as possible. So again, we're gonna adjust our curve until we have all the blue overlays disappear. And now we know that we have a details even in the darkest part of the image. When you finish using the clipping masks, you can again hit J on your keyboard, or you can go back into your histogram and again click on the white dots. The next feature is only available when you're working with RAW files. What we're gonna do, we're gonna straighten vertically our image using the develop RAW tool. So let's go ahead and move into our main toolbar, click on the develop RAW tool, and then go all the way to the bottom where we wanna open the optics and transform. Before you're going to use the transform, make sure that your auto distortion auto fix chromatic aberration and auto difference is on. After that, you can close the optics and move here where now you have this little button which will allow you to straighten your image vertically. So when you click on that, it takes a few seconds, it scans the image and then automatically transform it for you. So you can see how the street is now nicely in line and straightened. It's important to remember that this feature right now is only available with the raw files. So you can only access it through the develop raw tool. Moving forward to the tip number nine, we are still talking about raw files. When you bring a raw file into Luminar Neo and then start the development in the edit module, there is only limited amount of tools you can use before the file stopped being a raw file. In fact, there is only three of them. Let me show you. We have the develop raw tool with all the usual developments available here. After that, you can also use safely the crop AI tool. You can crop your image without losing the full power of the raw file. And additionally, if you use the noiseless AI extension, it also has the noiseless raw version which can also be used safely before moving into the other tools. So develop raw, noiseless raw and crop tools are the one that can be used before the image is developed. The moment I step into any other tools like enhance AI and touch the slider, you will see that the raw tools disappear and we are not working on the raw file anymore. This is why it's important to remember that when you're working on a RAW file in Luminar Neo, the first thing you wanna start with is a develop RAW tool, noiseless RAW tool, and crop tool. And to finish our list, we're gonna talk about our favorite section of our main toolbar. Maybe it's something you know about and you use it all the time. However, I really wanna just remind you that it's there and it's something you should be using to speed up the whole process. All of us have some favorite tools in Luminar Neo. For example, me, of course, I always use the develop tool. I use the enhance AI. I also use the details, mystical tool, and I also use the super contrast tool all the time. So what I can do, I can just right click on the tool in our main toolbar and click on add to favorites. I can do the same with my mystical tool landscape tool, details tool, and then develop tool. 
Now, as you can see, the tools disappear from our main toolbar. However, when I scroll up, you will see that we have our favorite section here now, and I can just very quickly go through the tools I use all the time. If I stop use certain tool, maybe I just don't use it as much anymore, I can just right click on it and select remove from favorite. Now it will not disappear, it will just move to its original location and you can use it from there. So don't forget about your favorite section. Again, it's a great way of how you can speed up the whole photo editing process. Now, if you have your favorite tip on how you can speed up the process or make it a little easier and we haven't covered it in this video, please make sure that you share it with us in the comment of this video so we can learn from you and improve our workflow when editing in Luminar Neo. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Yeah.